Hi everyone, this is Alex from SkySiv and today we're going to be looking at our updated free beam tool and all the useful functionality it can give you even if you're a student or a professional it's got a lot of cool built-in features and we'll talk about some of them today. So this is the main screen of beam when you actually load it up and it's split into kind of three parts of the screen. Over here on the left you've got your main menu in the middle portion you've got your graphical interface and on the right hand side is where kind of additional options and parameters will appear as we go through the process. So we'll get started by just flowing through all the different buttons shown on the menu on the left hand side. Um, so to get started click on the beam button and this is where we'll define our beam length or span. So for our example today I'll just add in a beam of 3 meters and you can see that shows up now in the middle of the screen. Um, next up, what you want to do is define some supports for the beam. So currently in beam, we offer a pin support, a roller support, a fixed support and a spring support. And we also have a cool little function to input the position where you can either pick a meter location that you want to put in your support. So that would correspond to down here on the bottom of the screen, that's your zero meter and that's your three meter. So you can place the support anywhere in there or you can use our cool little buttons over here for the left, the, the middle or the right. Um, in which case we'll just automatically add them in for you. So it's really easy to add supports at the ends using this function. So I'm just gonna add a pin support at the zero meter mark. And I'm gonna add a roller support to the right hand side at the three meter mark. So that's it for our supports, let's go back. Um, now we're gonna define our section shape. So when you head into the section menu, you can see that there's an option here to automatically, or sorry, to um, input a custom moment of inertia or a custom Young's modulus value. But we don't need to do that. Uh, what I like to do instead is actually use our section builder product. So if you click launch section builder here, you get taken to a screen that looks like this. And what this allows you to do is either create your own shape or input from a set of standard shapes. But my favorite thing is that you can actually go into the database here and we have a massive collection of shape um, section sizes and properties from all around the world. So for our example today, I'll just, I'll pick something from Australia, which is where I am. Uh, I'll go seal to 50 grade and maybe a PFC. Let's do a PFC of 200. So you can see that loads up and now you can see, you can confirm that you've picked the right section and that's what it looks like. And over here on the right hand side, We've got a whole bunch of properties for, for the PFC that we chose, including the actual material and all its strength values, density, Young's modulus, etc., as well as its dimensions. And we can perform some operations too, but we won't do that today. Um, or you can even apply a taper. Um, what's cool about this though is that you can modify these values. So if you need to come in here and slightly modify something from a database, um, it provides a really easy way to quickly just slightly customize a shape if you need something really close to a database shape. So that's all good though. Let's, let's just submit a 200 PFC, a regular one. And you can see that's shown up now. And we can kind of confirm over here that we picked the right thing. Let's head back. Um, last in our kind of modeling section is the hinges. Um, function. I'm not going to do that today, but it allows you to essentially add in a hinge anywhere along the section. So we've, we're done modeling the beam now. And what I usually like to do after finishing modeling is actually head up here next to the solve button. There's a little um, little cube icon there. And what that is, is it, it shows you your model in 3D. So now we can actually move around the camera and have a look. And I usually do this just to make sure you know, I've got the PFC, it's the right section, um, and we're good to go. So now let's head back by clicking the same icon again, and let's apply some loads. So we offer a few different kinds of loads. Um, there's point loads, there's fixed moments, and there's distributed loads. So today I'm gonna just add some point loads and some distributed loads, but it's pretty handy to have those fixed moments as well for particular cases. So 
let's go into the point loads. And the first thing you'll do is pick a direction for the point load. Um, so we've just got kind of down, up, and a angle that you can specify. So for today, let's just do a down, a downwards point load. And in a similar way to when we were defining the supports, you can pick any location along the beam or you can use our handy little buttons here. So I'm just gonna click the middle of the beam for our point load. And let's do a magnitude of say um, two. Let's just do two kilonewtons today. And uh, the last option it'll ask you to pick is your load case. And it might not be too obvious why we need to define this now, but it comes in later when we start defining load combinations and checking against codes. So a point load is typically going to be a live load. Um, so I'm going to leave it as live load and put a two kilonewton magnitude and add that in. And you can see that comes up now. Really easy to tell what you've added in. So let's go back. And as I said earlier, we'll, we'll skip over the fixed moments today, but let, let's add in a distributed load as well. So similar way to the point load, pick a direction, um, pick some positions and some magnitudes. And with the distributed loads, you can pick different magnitudes at the start and the end meaning you can create triangular distributions of distributed loads if you want to. So I'm, for today, I'm just gonna do something relatively simple and do just the start and end of the beam and we'll just do a magnitude of three and we'll just do three at the end as well. And this will typically correspond to a dead load case. So we'll, we'll leave that as dead load as well. So let's apply that and there you go, that shows up over the top of the point load. So now we've got our loads put in. And as I said earlier, we already defined our load cases, so we've kind of done the hard work already. Um, now what's really cool is we go into our load combinations, and here you've got your kind of tabular input for load combos for the various factors. So you can obviously change these manually and add and delete rows as you want. Um, and you can obviously change the criteria as well. So whether something's a strength or a serviceability. So if you're doing a um, stress check or a deflection check, those two would um, be covered by strength and serviceability. But I don't usually put in these or, uh, by myself because what's really cool is we have this import from design code function. So you just hit that. And now we've got a selection of countries and regions from around the world and their corresponding design codes. So for today, I would pick Australia, New Zealand, and that's our design code 1170. I'll hit display, and all of a sudden we've got all the load combinations from AS1170 um, ready to go and ready to be put into our design. Now, I don't really need all of them today because I only defined a point load which was a live load and a distributed load as a dead load. So for today, I'm gonna to toggle them all off and I'm actually just gonna pick kind of two of the main most common ones that you would see in Australia, which would be 1.2G plus 1.5Q for a um, dead and a live load. And then the corresponding um, SLS case for that would be this one here, which would just be your G case plus your Q case, which is live load. So let's import those two in and you can see that's been done automatically and we've got the proper live loads 1.2 and one for the serviceability. So let's hit save on that. And now we're pretty much ready to go. The last thing you typically wanna have a look at is up here in the top corner, we've got a little checkbox here for self weight. So that comes in handy. Usually if you're doing longer elements, you may wanna include self weight or not, but for today, I'll just leave it unchecked. Um, so we're pretty much done now with all of our inputs and loads. So let's hit solve in the top right corner. So running the analysis. And that's it. So now we're on the results screen and in a similar way to before, it's kind of split up into two main sections. This whole left-hand portion here is for more graphical views. So you can go through here and see all the reactions, your bending moment diagram, shear force, deflection, stress, everything and um, down here at the bottom as well, you'll also just get a, a cool little summary of, of your section and all of its properties. And right down at the bottom, you'll get a little 3D view similar to the one we had before. Um, so that's the kind of left-hand side of the screen portion. The right-hand side of the screen is where all the real kind of numbered results are. 
um, and it's split up into three different tabs. So there's analysis, design, and optimization. Um, so within the analysis tab, this is where you'll basically see all of the results of the beams load um, and the behavior versus um, certain criteria that you can set up. So an example would be within the deflection tab here, the limit is L on 250. Um, and this is the current maximum ratio that we're getting for our actual beam. So the status is that it is passed. So the analysis tab in general is for checking against um, criteria that you can define. Um, some other examples are your material yield or your strength or your ultimate strength or a custom stress limit, which you can define. Um, down here below the summary in the, in the results section, you can also go through the individual load combinations that we set up earlier. So in Australia, for example, it defines ULS and SLS load cases combinations. So I can go through those and see exactly how the beam performed in each case. Um, and you can see how things like the, the point loads are being factored based off the ULS or SLS case because that was the combinations that were being applied. Um, so that's the analysis tab. The design tab is where it gets pretty interesting because we can check our beam not just against regular criteria like what, what I showed in the analysis tab but against the actual codes for your region. So we offer many different codes from all around the world for many different materials as well. So we have general steel, which is what I'll probably be using today. Um, we've got cold form steel, we've got wood, and we've got concrete as well. And these are always being added to, there's always new ones coming out, and our developers try to stay on board with any updates. So we've actually got the latest 2020 copy of the Australian steel code in here. Um, and this is where you can uh, just input the design factors and the member design parameters. So they, these will be very specific to whatever code you're working on. Um, but for us, let's just leave it all as default and let's hit submit. So now we're gonna actually run the beam design again, but we're checking it against the Australian code specifically. Um, and you can see it's passed because we didn't really put very much load on it. So you can see these are all the various um, capacities basically so these are the ratios as a, which are a summary of how did the beam perform for each of these specific criteria so an example is for your moment we've got we're getting a ratio of 0 0.1 and you can also see more detail down here if you pick the specific criteria as well so a 0 0.1 ratio that would mean essentially a 10 percent utilization of the beam under moment criteria so there's our moment capacity as well, which is really handy to know. And that applies for all the other criteria as well. So we can look at shear, or we can look at buckling if that was more applicable, which is not really in this case, or axial or deflection, any, any of the criteria really that the Australian code or your particular region's code defines. So that's all well and good. Um, and now that we've got this kind of analysis that's performed against the Australian code, we can actually hit design summary report and this just gives us a cool little quick summary table of all the sections, the inputs, the loads you applied, and all the capacities and ratios for your code specifically. So this kind of report you can get is very much specific to the design aspect tab that we were just looking at. So it's about your code getting a report that just says, yes, your beam works against your region's code, which is really handy. Um, the last tab up here is the optimized tab. We're not really gonna look at it in too much detail today, but essentially the optimizer is, uh, it allows you to get, to let SkySiv iterate through uh, different section shapes and find the most optimal section shape based on the variables that you input here. So an example for that might be that I'm trying to design a beam that needs to fit into a certain height. So I can set a height limit and I can set a maximum ratio that I wanna be able to reach. So by default, it's set at 95% utilization ratio for the beam. So once I set those two criterion, I can say optimize the section for me. And what we'll do is we'll iterate through every different section size until we find the one that, that most perfectly fits those input criteria. So it basically ensures that you're not gonna over-design your member or under-design your member if it was failing. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature as well. So that's the basic three tabs 
of the um, results area over here on the right. Once you've kind of gone through all that and looked at that, what I typically do is uh, I might output the design summary report for my, my particular code. But after I've done that, the next thing I like to do is come up here to the results um, dropdown list from the top menu. And up here is where you can kind of get a more detailed results report for your analysis results. So an example would be, let's click PDF analysis report and you can see SkySiv Beam report set up. So I can tell SkySiv all the different things that I wanna include or not include in a report that'll get written. And this, this one will be a lot more detailed and longer than the one I showed earlier from the design tab. This will be one that goes through mainly all the results shown here on the left-hand side of the results page. So let's just hit create report and it's just gonna prepare it. So in the background, we're gathering all the information and formatting it all into a nice PDF document basically. Um, and if we give it a few seconds, there we go, it's ready. Hit download. And now I've just got a cool formatted, easy to read, easy to look at report, which covers basically everything. Um, all the different diagrams um, of your results, all the sections you put in, as I said earlier, it's basically that left-hand side of the screen from the results page. So that's how you can output a really easy PDF report of what we just made. Um, so in combination between, between having this report and having the design um, summary report I shared earlier, that pretty much covers you. Um, that is a very comprehensive um, kind of output of, of your beam and it's basically ready to go after that. So. I think that that covers pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. Um, there's a whole bunch of other cool features built into the product as well, which we don't really have that much time to go over today. But the best thing to do is to just get on and give it a go because most of the features I've shown today are available for free. So jump in um, and have a play for yourself and see if it does what you want. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to just click the little chat icon down in the bottom right corner of the website. Um, that'll connect you to one of our support staff at any time of day. We, we have people all around the world um, who are on the chat system pretty much at all hours. So if you have any questions at all or need any help, never hesitate just, just to hit that button and get in contact with us. Um, but that's all for today. So yeah, um, thanks so much for watching the video and give it a like, give it a comment, all that stuff. Subscribe to our channels um, wherever you're watching us and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.